Welcome, this is the uh, Algebra 1 end of course practice test number 3, question number 32. The question says factor completely uh, 6xy squared minus 18xx squared y plus 12xy. Now what I'm going to do here is sort of find out what each one of these terms have in common. And then I'm going to pull it out front, do a little division, and then I'm going to get my final answer. I also just recently, and, and literally I mean like five minutes ago, sort of figure out another way that you can do this problem. I use a similar method as a kind of a last result if I have a last resort, I should say, if I only have one variable. So if it only had x in it, I could use it. But I figured out a way we could sort of lock the y in and still use it if there's two variables. And it has no mathematical integrity at all. But the first thing I'm going to do does. So I need to look at my numbers uh, to see uh, the coefficients in front, the numbers in front of the variables, to see if I have anything in common. I know for a fact that 6 is in all of them, just because I can, I know that 6 times 2 is 12 and 6 times 3 is 18, and 6 is the most I can pull out of the front. You should always start with the smallest number in dividing, just to see if it works. Uh, also, if you're struggling with multiplication tables or whatever, uh, I think you're allowed to have multiplication tables available to you, so talk to your teacher. Anyway, or you can use a calculator, whatever it happens to be. So I know that I can pull a 6 out in the front. Um, I also know that they all have an x in common. Now, this has x to the first power. This has y to the first, x to the first, y to the first. You can only pull out the smallest of those numbers. I can't pull uh, x squared out of this one because it only has an x, but I can pull out one of them. And finally, I'm going to see that I have a y, at least a y in all of them, so I can pull out a y. What, uh, what you'll do next is do a little bit of division. So I'm going to sort of break this down to show you where some of these answers come from, just in case you've seen this type of problem, but you really had no clue what the heck people were doing to get the answer. It wasn't explained very well. That's supposed to be a squared. I'm going to mark that out and pretend like that never happened. Um, basically, I found the thing that I'm factoring out, and now I'm going to divide each one of the terms by that amount. And I'm also going to make sure that I put my little ones as exponents on each of my variables if it's a one. So numerically the first one is six divided by six so the number that would go in front is one but you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, now that I divide my numbers uh, exponents you do one operation on the order of operations less so one less than division and subtraction. So if I have one here and one here they just cancel out completely. I tend to pick if there's if one of them is greater than the other, I tend to circle it to remind me where that variable is going to end up in the end of the problem. 2 minus 1 is 1, so I'm left with y to the first power out of all of that. So I'm going to put that term right here. Uh, on this one, I do 18 divided by 6, and that would be 3. And it's, since there's a minus here, I'm going to do minus 3. So those are good to go. That's out, that's out, it's 3. The 2 is bigger than the 1 down here, so those cancel, and I end up with 2 minus 1, or 3x, uh, and the y's cancel out, so I'm left with 3x here. So that number goes right there. Uh, for here, there's x's and y's on the top and the bottom, so they go away. 12 divided by 6 is 2, so I end up with a final answer of too. So I feel confident in the idea that 6xy uh, times the quantity y minus 3x plus 12 can get you to the answer. So the answer to number 32 is A. Now, some of you might have stuck around for just a minute to like, hey, you said there's something about what if I didn't know how to do it the long way? Uh, and I know sometimes you get to the test day and it's really scary and whatnot. And this method is very clunky. There's no mathematical value to it. But uh, hopefully you know how to factor properly by the time you get to the test. But just in case, I want to cover all spectrum here. So here's the reality of the situation. When you turn on your calculator, uh, your x and y values, uh, so if I hit this and I make an x to graph with, it has a value attached to it. That's based on what you choose in your graph and what you graph it. I found out just a second ago, fiddling around uh, with the calculator, that if I hit alpha and touch the y, I can actually lock this value in if I want. So right now it's 10. What I'm going to do is go in, to set my x value, I can actually change it in the window. The y doesn't work that way, unfortunately, but uh, there is a little connection to the numbers. So if I wanted my x value to be, negative ten, uh, to be positive 10, I could just leave it like this. If I want it to be um, 5, I would make it negative 5 and 5 for my x minimum and x maximum. And I know you're thinking, like, well, you said earlier that it would already be locked in at 10, and I just saw it, and it said 0, so here's why. You have to graph something. Now, as I was saying about the y, whatever number, so say I wanted to do 2x plus 5. 
if I hit it like if I set it up like this and hit the graph button now, it will actually knock lock my x value in as 10. Incidentally enough, it'll lock my y value in, I think, as the number in front of the x here and then 5. So it gives me the result. Since x is 10, it's uh, 2 times 10 is 20 plus 5. So the thing is you have to graph it. Otherwise, it never locks the numbers in. So as you can see, hopefully, the x value becomes 10. On, as I was saying earlier, the alpha and y button becomes 25. So now that they're not the same amount, we can actually just type in the question. So I'm going to do 6x squared, or sorry, 6x. I'm not squaring x there. It's just 6x. So 6x, kick out of that to, or delete that. I don't want that. Um, now I can go hit alpha and then the y and then square the y. Minus 18x squared and then y and then finally plus 12 x and uh, alpha y so it looks exactly like the question does I'm gonna hit enter now and I get this weird number that doesn't mean anything It has no mathematical connection other than the fact that uh, the x and y values are locked in and it just uh, basically did multiplication the thing is the answer choice that matches it with the most factored out that's the big deal here you have to pick the one with the most factored out because actually two of these will give you uh, will make this system work uh, so this little trick that I'm using will work for a and C but the a value has the 6xy pulled out in front or factored out that's the one you want to choose because it's the most factor so I would start with these two to see if either of them match and then I would go to C and D if one of these two match you know it's the right answer so I suspected that the answer would be A so I'm going to test it and all you're doing is just making it look exactly like the question and you hit enter and it's exactly the same. Uh, you can see that the one that I said C would probably also give you the same uh, basic answer. I'm going to test that theory really quickly. And if it gives you the same answer, it'll seem confusing if you don't start with the one that's the most factored out in the future. I'm just trying to warn you because if you're going to use this method, it's not great at all. It just happens to be able to be a little tricky part of the calculator that lets you get away with it. See how it gives you negative 4,500 uh, also? That's why you pick A, because it's the most factored out. To prove that they're not all that, by the way, just in case you thought, well, everything's going to be negative uh, 4,500 or whatever. I'm going to show you that that's not the case, uh, and then I'm going to be done. This video is a little longer than I intended it to be, but I did want to show you this, because I just found out about it, and it's kind of neat. See how it doesn't match? It should match if it should match the answer uh, that I got when I plugged in the top, and it doesn't. So the answer to this one is A. Remember, if you're going to use this method, you have to lock the X and Y values in. The X value you can lock in by setting the X, max, and min, and then graphing something. The Y value will be set based on what you graph. So if you do 3X plus 5 and you have your X being 10, it'll be 35. They have to be different in order for this to work, otherwise you'll get funky answers. Um, like I said, there's no mathematical value in this. It won't help you when you get to Algebra 2 or move on into another level. So I suggest you learn to do it the other way. But this is like the just-in-case uh, test day comes up and you're a little nervous method. So good luck.